There's a lot of excitement surrounding the Chicago Bears in the next phase of where this roster is going to go. With that has come some unrealistic expectations. We're going to talk about some of the things that could realistically go away different than Chicago Bears fans are hoping for in this upcoming season. Plus, we're going to dive into the mailbag. All that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. What's going on, Bears fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. I'm the host, Eric Hayes, but more importantly, you guys can follow the channel at Shy Bears Central on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into this content. And so I want to talk about I we all have high expectations. We, me, C Dub, Bobby, we all have high expectations for what this team is going and can be. But I want to talk about some of the things that could go different than what Bears fans are hoping for when it comes down to it. Um, Because we we are starting to, the, the unrealistic expectations are starting to come in. That's not to say that some of these things won't live up to the expectations, but I just want to go uh, be real on where are some of the things that still could technically go wrong in a lot of ways with the Chicago Bears roster this upcoming year. And the first thing we got to start about is with Caleb Williams, and that is with any rookie quarterback that comes in. We have a lot of people have expectations. We have in a voicemail today that we'll be going over where somebody just has that high expectation. Let's talk about it. In the last 10 years, 56 rookie quarterbacks have thrown at least 100 passes. And of them, 22 of those of those quarterbacks had passer ratings higher than 84.5, meaning that uh, it doesn't mean that you have to be terrible, but it means that most rookies, when they come into the NFL, when they come into the league, they're rookies. They're Okay, right with and they, a lot and and you know the seasons like a CJ Stroud had that's anomalies. So that doesn't mean that it's going to happen for everybody. Even with players that come in and have generational type talent or anything like that, it does not mean that that's now going to be the barrier of what means uh, wh- what a quarterback could be over the over the 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 course of their of their NFL career. Right now, there are chances when you look at Caleb Williams that he could be you know be better than that, right? Better than the, than the average there. But when it comes down to it, 27 quarterbacks have been chosen fourth overall since the uh, NFL, mer- NFL AFL merger. Thir- 13 of those threw more touchdown passes than interceptions as rookies. 12 of them threw more interceptions and two threw the exact same number. What does that mean? Re- in being in reality, and, that, and keep in mind, there are some really great quarterbacks that came out of that. And I think that a lot of Bears fans, whether right or wrong, however you look at it, are going to look at what Caleb Williams does this rookie year and try to make that determination on if that means he could, he's going to live up to the hype over time or anything else like that. When it comes down to it, the first thing that could go, and I say, and by wrong, I don't mean that he could have a bad season, but he could very well walk away with a very mediocre season at, overall as a quarterback. Now, if he surprises, play better than that? Yeah. You know, you CJ Stroud, Andrew Luck, these are two players that, that really kind of bucked those trends, right? They got their their teams immediately into the playoffs, but that is rare. That's extreme. I just named two. It's extremely rare, and so that's what it comes down to: is that there there it could be a lot. You you when it comes down to rookies, you 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 don't want to put everything as far as what the team can be. This is why you see Ryan Poles really build out the team the way that he has, and that's why me, C-Dub, and Bobby have really talked about the fact that the expectations for the team are different than just the expectations for Caleb Williams, and I know and understand that wins and losses are looked at as a QB stat. I get that, right? But again, just kind of be a little bit more realistic there. Now, you also got to look at that the offensive line could just be bad, right? Is is that that's That's a case as well. With that, the offensive uh, line last three years with Justin Fields allowed sack rates of 10.6%, 14.7%, and 11.8% the last years. That is the highest rate in the NFL over those over that that time that time span. Now, Chicago Bears have done; they've added more depth. Uh, we didn't get to see all of that offensive line all up and down last year. Years stay healthy, so that's something to really look at as well. But again, really looking at how this offensive line that is something that could potentially go wrong with it. Now, you look at you know, a lot of people do blame Justin Fields for holding the ball too long as a, as a large reason of the sacks. It played a part, but I don't I don't think you can blame it just on that. So we'll see what happens with that and you know, if that's something that develops well, but the offensive line being bad is something that still could go very very wrong when it came down to it. So, uh you know, we'll see what happens with that. Then next up is like uh, have the Bears done enough out on the edge? 
right, is that we know we got Montez Sweat. We know how the Bears' defense looked so much better last year after the addition of Montez Sweat. you got to give it credit for that. That that defensive line looked so much better. He helped Justin Jones in part got his contract because of how good he looked after Montez Sweat being there. But th- th- there are still questions on that defensive line. Montez Sweat is not one of them. But with having Javon Dexter looking to be that three-tech unless the Bears do something different in the draft, that, you know, the, the the other edge, Demarcus Walker right now is probably slated as being the edge starting on the opposite side of uh, of Montez Sweat. And while Walker has had some seasons of absolutely getting a lot of sacks and, get, and getting to the quarterback, and it could be that he just ends up being solid enough at that route where you're looking at, like, the young players and Javon Dexter and Zach Pickens to really take the most of their opportunities, um, there is something to be said that, Maybe the defensive line and the trenches overall maybe aren't as good as what we need them to be. But I think having Montez there, I, I feel pretty confident in it. And I think Demarcus Walker is going to be able to go back to what we saw from him. And don't out look outside the chance that Yannick Ngakwe could come back in the Chicago Bears uniform as well. And then lastly, the running game. We know that we added Swift. You add that to Roshan Johnson, Khalil Herbert. And, you know, the Bears have had a top one or two running game each of the last two seasons. But let's not act like Justin Fields didn't help that running game as well, and those numbers inflate. And so while Caleb Williams can get creative outside the pocket with his legs as well, you don't necessarily want him to have to be as big of a part of that running game as what Justin Fields was. That's why you saw that come in. And so we'll see what's going to happen with that. But with Shane Waldron and stuff like that, you hope that that those are going to be all right as well. But there are still some big questions on this on this, uh, on, on this team that we have to look forward to in next season, see how they're going to come along. But that first one and the main one is, Caleb Williams could end up just being what most rookies are in their rookie year. And that's still okay, despite what some Bears fans are going to have you think that it has to be this instantaneous success with Caleb Williams. Now, we hope that that's going to be the case. And guess what? I've even said you got to get it right. And so in that, you're going to get reactions and overreactions, underreactions for some Bears fans. But we'll see what that ends up bringing, man. But let's go ahead and get into the mailbag for today. It is Friday. That means this episode is mainly built around your voicemails. Let's get into this first one. This one's from Vaughn. Yo, CBC, what's the word? It's your boy, Big Vaughn, from the low end. I had to spin back on y'all boys, man. I, I don't think y'all understood my point in what I was saying. Like, at the end of the day, we know Justin Fields is gone. I wasn't banging the table for Justin Fields to come back. He's gone. What I'm saying is this, to, to make it simple and sweet like y'all said. At the end of the day... <clears throat> I was saying, I don't care that we have Montez Sweat. Yes, he affected our team last year, but what I'm saying is I don't give a damn. What I'm saying is moving forward, if who we plug in at the number one pick and who was expected to be Caleb Williams, we shouldn't have no problems with getting three to four more wins. Point blank, period. That's what I'm saying. You know, Justin did what he did and he held it down. And we appreciate him for that. The city going to always love him for that. But what I'm saying is Caleb Williams is up next. And I'm tired of people talking about Justin Fields, he's a still in that. Like my boy Fred call in every week, and he hollering about Justin Fields and trading the number one pick, and I feel him on that. You know what I'm saying? I don't think we should trade the number one pick to, for the sake of just getting more picks. To me, that don't make sense when we just set our team up for the next 10 years. To me, what makes sense is you take Caleb at number one, and you see what we have at number nine. You can either grab a defensive guy or an offensive tackle that you can plug and play immediately, or you can trade back. The point I was making was this, guys. Caleb Williams is the future. This this is not no, well, oh, we should get a, a veteran quarterback and let him play and let Caleb sit. No, it don't work like that. We in a totally different situation where we set our team up for Caleb to be successful. I understand what Montez Sweat brought. I understand he's one of the only guys that led two teams in sacks. I understand that. But my point was I don't give a damn. At the end of the day, we have enough to win with Caleb. I ain't talking about Montez Swift. This is about Caleb and us embracing him and letting dude do his thing. I don't care about him painting his nails and people saying he Hollywood and all that. That's outside looking in. At the end of the day, we turn on the tape, that boy balls, and he looks better than anything we ever had at quarterback. That's the point I was making, guys. You know, that's all. You know, I, I rock with y'all boys, man. CBC to the world blow. Chicago up. Bet out. And that's kind of what I said in the in the first segment. Like, I get what you're saying in that, but you can't say you, you may not give a damn, but guess what? It still does give a damn, and it matters for the team. And so I, I just like to look at things unrealistic. To say that you don't give a damn and just, oh, well, Caleb Williams is supposed to be that. He should add three wins instantly. It's not often that rookies do that. Now, he could come and do that, but I'm I'm more so saying this, is that if he does not come in and he's not that right away, it's not a waste. 
per se, right? You got to see how it's going to develop over years. So um, that's what I think to it is that, yeah, Caleb could be the guy and the Bears have absolutely set him up to succeed. But again, it's about the team overall. And that's what me and C-Dub were kind of responding to with your voicemail over the weekend. Not saying that we don't understand the expectations around Caleb, but it's still about the team more. So if the Bears are going to get and be better than what they were last year, it's not going to be just because of Caleb more than likely. And if he does come in there and does that, that's great. We haven't seen anything like that to your point, right? And all the the tape and everything that you watch and all the hype, it's easy to kind of dive into that and stay in that. But I like to stay in the realm of reality. And for this Chicago Bears team to be a playoff team, to be that team that's contending for a playoffs, it's going to take the team. It's not going to be just, just because of a rookie quarterback, no matter how good the rookie quarterback ends up being in the long run. And so that's the way that we kind of look at it again just I just err on the side more of realism, but I understand the expectations. What I feel like you're saying, and I don't want to paraphrase for you, is you're speaking about the expectations, and that's fine to have those expectations. Ryan Poles got his guy, and very much like I've said many times, you now have your guy. That's how it's going to be looked at. That's how it's going to be painted. Your, your guy better damn well work out. But let's get into the next voicemail. This one's from Darius. What's going on, man? Darius from Dallas here. I'm going to say one thing, one more thing about this Caleb Williams thing, and I'm going to let it be that gum, and I'm tired of talking about it. Uh, I got to call my people out, man. When I say my people, I'm talking about, I'm talking about my, my, my fellow brothers and sisters of black people, wherever you want to call us these days. Um, come on, man. You know how it is in our community, bro. We all know somebody. If you didn't go to prison, we know somebody in our family or one of our friends that went to prison and went there and sucked on some boy pussy while they were in there. Okay, now you want to sit up here and believe they they lies about how they served 10, 15 years and then touch no boy booty holes, and that's fine. But y'all still accept them, and y'all let them come on back to the cookout and all that and be around your kids and all kind of shit, okay? So why can't Caleb be gay and play football? Why does that even fucking matter? I'm just, I'm just not understanding it, man. We got a lot of insecure men that call in on this fucking podcast, man. Uh, y'all, got, y'all got to get past that, bro. I mean, if the kid can ball, the kid can ball. If he's zesty, let him be zesty. Let him throw some zesty touchdown passes. I don't give a fuck. Whoever the starting center is, hey, if he needs to fondle you a little bit in between snaps, let him do it. We ain't had no good quarterback here before. Whatever he needs to do to be great, let's do it. DJ Moore, if he want to kiss you in the mouth after every touchdown reception, you let him do it. I don't give a fuck. Let him walk around in training camp in a fucking two-piece bikini for all I goddamn care. And there's also a side of this, too, man, where maybe Caleb is just doing this because he understands, like his generation does, how to gain fame, money, and popularity through social media. So maybe he's doing all this shit because y'all keep fucking talking about it, and it's just loading his fucking pockets up. He don't give a goddamn because, quite frankly, I don't remember this Caleb Williams at Oklahoma. I'm here in Texas. I'm a diehard uh, Texas Longhorn fan. I see, I've, I've seen us play against that guy. I don't remember Caleb having no, no nail polish on and all that stuff when he was at, uh, at, at Oklahoma. That started at USC when he got more attention around it, and he started doing all these antics and stuff. But, y'all, he could be just doing all this shit just for show, man. He's trying to boost his brand right now, most likely. All right? The boy ain't gay. He, he, you know, he, he's got a woman that look better than anything that we got. So, uh, man, let the boy be, man. And y'all quit all this goddamn homophobic shit like you ain't got an uncle that just done went to prison a couple years ago, and he was in there for 10 years. He came out and said he ain't touched no boys. And y'all still hang out with him. So, fuck it, man. Text us up there, there. Listen, I love that you said it. The insecure man. Here's the thing. The Bears, for the insecure men, the Bears did something that two things this offseason that triggered so many Bears fans. They drafted, they're going to draft, apparently, a zest, a zesty quarterback in Caleb Williams. And then on top of that, they hired a woman on their coaching staff. The All the fake woke, all the, all the, all the dumbass assery, like the people who think, oh, you're going woke just because there's a woman around. Shut the fuck up. As far as zesty, like I've said before, Dennis Rodman played pretty damn good for the Chicago Bulls, right? I don't give a damn what Caleb Williams is doing in his personal time. And I would I go on to say I question more people that that constantly talk about this man's lips than having lip. I ain't talk, heard uh, this many grown men talk about another grown man's lips in my whole entire life other than if you were roasting Tyrone Biggums for having ashy lips. Other than that, if you don't know who Tyrone Biggums is, just please go ahead and click off the podcast. Don't even worry about it. But, like, that's the most that I've ever seen this in my life, in my 37 years on this planet. And when it, like, like, like I said, some of y'all daddy, never mind. I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to let that be. I'm going to let that be. But when it comes down to it, like this is the reason why your mama don't fuck with your daddy. But uh, anyway, so when it comes down to it, I'll say this. All I care about is what Caleb Williams does 
on the football field. Now, if what he does off, and you even say get, Caleb Williams isn't even gay, he's zesty, right? Whatever it is, I don't care how zesty this man is. This man can fly into Soldier Field on a goddamn uh, 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 umbrella like Mary Poppins in a tutu. And if he comes down there and throws three or four touchdowns and throw for 375 yards and the Bears are winning, I'll, I'm not even thinking about how he just got to the stadium. I don't give a flying fuck what Caleb Williams does in his personal life. I'm a Chicago Bears fan. I care about what you do on that field for the Chicago Bears. Now, if you can do some, some you know, activism and things like that, all oh, great. Like, yeah, but at the end of the day, what can you do on the football field? And I think so many people get so caught up in narratives that they forget that that's what we're, we're here to play some football games. Let's see what he does on the football field. All right, let's get into this next voicemail. This one's from Dewan. Hey, C-Dub, Bobby, Steve Bowles, Kanye, boy, this your boy Dewan from the low end. Calling in, you know, I've been uh, watching y'all. I ain't been calling in like I used to, you know, but I've been checking out everything y'all saying, you know, and I, and, uh, I really appreciate y'all and the news that y'all dropping, you know, so, um, with everything that's going on with the Bears, you know, if we grab Caleb Williams, hey, that's our quarterback, but I hope, I hope, like you said, Saturday, that we did get it right. Because a lot of people, you know, on the negative side, then, we might have did it wrong, and the draft ain't even happened yet, you know. So let's take it one day at a time. You know, I heard one of the callers say that, you know, the offensive line, uh, even with the people that we got, we ain't seen them in uh, Shane Walter's system yet. You know, we, we we can't really talk about sacks and all that and how they go play until we see them play. You know, that's why I feel whoever we get at quarterback, we should be able to, you know, put these first-team players through what they need to go through in preseason so they can get that camaraderie. camaraderie. That way, when the season starts, we're not starting off slow like last year and the year before that. When you don't play your starters, you go start off slow. You ain't got the chemistry built up. Everybody trying to worry about practice and everything, you still got to put it on the field. But outside of that, you know, if we do draft quarterback first, that ninth pick, I will like to take the best player on board if that's a doomsday. I feel like y'all. Grab them, because Keenan Allen ain't no guarantee he stays for the next two, three years. So that could be somebody we building under him to stay with DJ Moore. You know, so, like, I just I just like the way they're going with it. You know, like I said, Ryan Poles made his bed. He got to lay in it. And right now he's comfortable. He's happy with what he's done. And I like the way he had, uh, I like the way he had went back at Robert Griffin the third time about we came here to break the cycle. And I'm looking at them break this cycle because we as Bears fans, a lot of us are angry with what he's doing because we used to the bullshit. Now that I'm happy that he's doing the right thing, I can see everything coming around. We might be able to see, you know, a consistent playoff franchise. I ain't going to say team franchise for, for the next two years. You know what I mean? I don't know how long this going to last. I'm shit, hoping that we can get one before I leave this earth, a Super Bowl before I leave this earth. You know what I mean? I was born a year before one was won. And now I'm ready to see another one. So, you know, shout out to y'all. Shout out town up. Bear down. Taking the best player available at number nine. Um, Yeah, I, I, like, I think that that's what the Bears are, are prepared to do because it seems like. And things can go weird in the draft. We know that, right? It can go very left. Things can change. T- trades can be made. But it seems like there's a high probability of a damn good player in either Joe Alt, Romo Dunze, falling to the, to the Chicago Bears at number nine. If you look at either one of those guys, and if or Joe Oat, like if he like, come on, man. Like, what are we talking about? Joe Oat or Roma Dunze falling to the Chicago Bears at number nine? Those are two players. Like I said, Rome would would be a number one, the first wide receiver taken in most of these drafts. In some teams, depending on how if the Bears didn't have like a DJ Moore or a Keenan Allen, and you know, Rome would become a team's number one wide receiver right away in a lot of these cases as well, right? So the Bears can do really great. And I think it comes down to uh, you know. What, how they view whoever falls at nine and versus what deals are offered. So we'll see with that. But I agree with your other point. Just get it right. As far as the quarterback, that's all I ask for is get it right. And if it ends up being the right decision, like I said in the last voicemail, I don't care if he's flying into the stadium on an umbrella like Mary Poppins. Get the damn win. All right, let's get into the last voicemail for today. This one's from Fred. Hey, yo, hey, what up, man? It's be your boy, Fred, man. It's almost that time, man. It's, it's getting close to it, so. I'm just looking forward, man, to this draft, man, to see what's going to happen because you never know any given moment, you know what I'm saying, be surprised with the trades and picks and all that, et cetera. So I hope Ryan Poles, man, if he is, you know what I'm saying, going to go ahead and go into this draft before it picks, I hope he get no 
the right pieces and everything that we need, you know what I'm saying, for this team, man, so we can be, you know, competing for playoffs and NFC championship games, division titles and Super Bowls and, you know, all that type of stuff. Because it's time for this team, you know what I'm saying, to get back on the map to get the respect and everything they deserve, especially for us fans, you know. So I'm just waiting to uh, draft day, man. You know, do you think they going to, uh, with that nine pick, do you think they going to trade it? You know what I'm saying? And to somebody else and get a haul for that nine, or they just going to stay with the, the, the picks that they got and not do any trades. Because my thing is, you know, if I'm a GM, man, I ain't going to lie to you, Hayes. Like, this is just my opinion, though. You know, if I'm a GM, man, I'm not going to the draft for four picks. That's just me. Because I look at it like this. DJ Moore, he got two more years on his contract, right? So let's say DJ have a Pro Bowl year. Him and Keenan Allen. So how do you go about that? Of course, Keenan Allen, we can pay him less money because he's older. But DJ Moore is not going to take no no less money. He's going to at least want to get maybe ninety some million if he takes that, or at least a hundred million. We want to get paid like a top receiver. And let's say Ryan Poles don't want to pay him, you know, a hundred some million. So do you go ahead make a trade, get some picks, so that way you'll be you know set next year if you can't get DJ the contract that he wants, so you can be you no know, sense stacked up with picks. Because that's what I would do, just in case, you know, that's just a scenario. I'm just throwing it out there to you because I'm sitting there looking like, damn, you got four picks, and DJ only got two more years left on his contract. And if he have a Pro Bowl year, eventually he's going to want to get paid. So I don't know, man. You know, I hope, you know what I'm saying, like we going to the draft. You know, I'm not even thinking about the quarterback position. You know, if, if whether we get a another receiver or another edge or a left tackle or a center. But, I guess they okay in consent with Ryan Bates possibly being the starting center. But that left tackle, I think we might end up getting a left tackle either with that ninth pick if we don't trade. If not, we'll probably find a good, strong, solid left tackle that can start if we pick him up, if him up in the third round or something. So that's, that's, that's just what I'm guessing. But let me know what you think, man. Chicago was better out of nothing. All right, Fred, I get what you're getting at with going into the NFL draft with four picks. I think we've made a lot about that, right? But I think we also got to look at the fact that in 2025, and this is to your point as well, you say you got to, DJ Moore's locked up until the end of the 2025 season, meaning so we go through the all of next offseason and all of next draft with DJ Moore still under contract. Hopefully they're working on an extension at that point. But the Chicago Bears have eight draft picks in next year's draft. We have one number, or we have our first round pick. We got two uh, second round picks. We got a number, uh, uh, a third round pick, a four or five, and then and then two round picks in round six. The Bears have more than enough draft capital. I get what you're saying as far as going into the draft with only four draft picks, but you also got to look at what did you get with the draft picks that you sent out. Well, those draft picks became Montez Sweat and Keenan Allen. So I think when you look at that part of it as well. The Bears aren't, if we were still where we were in Ryan Pose's first year, yeah, I would say that only having four uh, uh, four draft picks isn't enough. But again, we've spent over the last, uh, like counting this draft, he will have 26 picks in three years, even with only having four picks. That's fine. And that's what we got to realize, man. It it, it, it it When it comes down to it, Ryan Pose has done good using his draft picks. Now, have all of them turned into instant day one starters? No. Are some of them going to be debt pieces? Yes. Are some not going to work out? Yes. But you don't necessarily need in every single draft to have a plethora of picks. You have to set yourself up. And if you do have a draft, you're going into one year this year with only four picks. Guess what? He played it pretty smart by having next year, you got yourself eight draft picks in next year's draft. So I think you've done pretty good in that case. That's my opinion. Again, I'm not, and I'm not to say that my opinion is more right than yours, Fred, because it comes down to it. It comes what Ryan Poles is. As long as he gets it, gets it right. That's all that matters in my opinion, I, I think. But you guys can let me know what you guys feel, as always, down below. Make sure you guys are following the show at, at Shy Bear Central. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, chicagobearcentral.gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail, the number to do so, 773-242-9336. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related, thanks to you guys. And like I like to end every episode on, Shy Town up, but bear down. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Media.